Hi folks. You know, getting information on how to fish a particular river or what techniques to use are very important. So what we're doing this year is we're pro providing seminars that we give throughout the region and we're putting them on video for you guys. The seminar that you're about to watch is a three-part series. It's a seminar on coho fishing on the Snohomish River. We did this seminar at Three Rivers Marine in Woodenville, Washington. I hope you find the information helpful. And when you're done watching part one, go ahead and move on to part two. Guys, can you hear okay with the door open? He's here all right? Okay. I just, you know, if we shut that door, it tends to get a little warm in here. So we want to make sure you guys are comfortable. So I'm going to talk a little bit today about uh, fishing the upper Snohomish River. Now, realistically, you can use these same techniques on the Skagit River or wherever you want to fish. But I'm going to talk to you guys about not just something that I want you guys to go in there and buy product, but the two techniques, three techniques that I use to get my clients into fish consistently um, when the coho are coming in. So let's talk about equipment. Yes, sir. The upper Snohomish River from Bailey's, which is just below Crab Bar, you know, kind of up from the Pilchuck River, uh, all the way to the confluence. That's the upper. And really, yeah, it's a pretty good question because the Snohomish River really isn't all that long. So it's really easy to get, you know, all of a sudden you're in the upper river and you don't know it. All right. So let's talk about equipment first. We'll jump into that. Because like Kent said, I have about 30 minutes. So I did have to cut some stuff out. If you have questions, just let me know. So if you're drift fishing, you're free drifting, or you're twitching jigs, casting plugs, or spinners, what I like to use is G. Loomis 1141 Ultralight Rod. I like the light action rod. It's plenty of rod for these silvers. It's plenty of rod for kings, because that's the same rod I fish in the summer when I'm free drifting for kings, okay, on the different rivers. You want to make sure that your reel's matched, and what I fish is 10-pound test. Okay, now I'm in a boat, and a lot of people think, wow, 10-pound test, that's not a lot, but I want my entire system to be balanced, okay? How many of you guys fly fish? All right, and you fly fish, you want to make sure you have a balanced system, right? Well, gear anglers, you need to learn something from the fly anglers, and when we fish our gear, you want a balanced system because you want to feel what's going on down there so you can set the hook and get into fish more often than not. So I can fish 10 pound test because I'm in a boat. When I hook that fish, the boat's moving with the fish. It's a dynamic system, all right? It's not like you're on the bank. If I'm standing on the bank or you're standing on the bank, you probably want to up your poundage on your main line. 12, maybe even 15 pounds. Maybe fish instead of an ultralight, fish just a light so you can fish that little heavier line. I use size 10 on my terminal gear. And again, a lot of people say, wow, that's really light. Size 10, and I fish Vision Tackle. I use their hooks and I use their tackle. A size 10 static breaking strength is 48 pounds. 48. That's a lot of poundage. And we're talking about hooking it onto something, pulling on the other side, and breaking it. We're in a boat, we're on the river, things are moving. I have a rod that has flex, it's dynamic, so 48 pounds is more than enough. Plus, it keeps everything balanced. And then I'm running eight pound leaders, depending on the visibility of what I'm doing or the type of bait I'm putting on the end of that leader, whether it's a Dick Knight, it's eggs, cheaters and yarn, whatever, the, the length of that leader is dependent on the visibility of the water. If I've got super clear water, I'm gonna have a longer leader. I never go over six feet. In fact, uh, for the most part, I'm right around five feet. Okay, but you can push it out to six if you need to. Now, if I'm trolling or back trolling, I want heavier gear. Now I'm going to use a bait caster type setup, okay? I like to fish the 981 Cs. I like the Loomis products. Uh, that's an eight foot two medium rod with a matched, and I use a Kuma. Uh, and I like line counters because if I'm, if I'm doing multiple things, like I've got guys in the boat, 
and we need to have our plugs out a certain distance, it's easier to say, put them out at 45 feet than it is to say, put it out at 20 pulls. Because some people I get, they don't know what a pull is, right? So I use the line counters. On these, I'm using monofilament. I'm not using a braid. I use braid for other applications, and I use 17-pound Iser line. I buy a lot of line. I buy big spools at a time. I like Iser. It's reliable. It's never let me down. Wow, look at that. How you guys like that? Let's back that up. All right. I've never seen that happen before. Whew. All right. Okay, so, and again, I'm still fishing 10 pound, or I'm sorry, size 10 barrel swivels, or, or uh, uh, barrel swivels and snap swivels. I don't up it to sevens or anything. I'm still fishing the 10s. It's fine, it's balanced. It doesn't give me any heartaches. If I'm using leaders, I fish 12 to 15 pounds, okay? 12 to 15 pounds on my leaders. I'm not fishing fluorocarbon. I work, I'm fishing all the time. I'm handling line all the time. Fluorocarbon is great for certain applications, but it can be very difficult to deal with as well, right? When you're tying knots constantly. Any questions on equipment? No? Okay. Pretty standard equipment. You guys are probably, you have 10 of each of those in your garage right now. All right. When you use the different lines, is that one and the other? I mean, you use different brands for this. Well, on, like actually on my, on my spinning gear, I use Iser line as well, okay? But I'm using 10 pound test. On my bait casters, I, it's, you know, a level wine reel. So that's heavier. And I'm still using Iser line. I'm using the same brand. When I fish the Columbia or I fish the saltwater for sturgeon or in the estuaries, I'm fishing a Power Pro, and that's a braid. I don't use braid on the rivers up here at all. It's just it's too much. You know, I break that off, and everybody's complaining. So, lures for coho. Let's talk about, and, and really, I'm not going to cover all the things for coho, I'm gonna cover what people are using the most, what I use the most. The number one lure that I use the most for coho fishing is the Dick Knight. Little bitty lure, I know that it frustrates people sometimes when they use this lure, they can't. Yeah, I've had people go, I hate this lure, I can't catch fish with it. And it's just understanding how the lure needs to act in the water, that's all it is. Once you understand that, and you're using the right equipment and it's a balanced system, now you have success with the Dick Knight, all right? Yarns and cheaters, corkies and yarn, winners and yarn, Northwest Classic. Yes, sir. Number one, number one. You can change that up. I don't use the Wii's, you could use the two, but I, I think a number one is of great size. Great size, yes, sir. Yes, we're gonna get into that because when we get to here in a minute, I'm really gonna go into the dick night and I'll really get into the action that you should be looking for, okay? Now, a lot of people have moved on and that's the way the fishing industry is. A new product comes out, you move away from something that was reliable. I'm gonna tell you guys something, yarn and cheaters, yarn and corkies, very reliable. If you use it the right way, it can really pay dividends at the fish count at the end of the day. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. Eggs. Now we've got easy eggs. Makes it easy. Which, one are the, which ones are the easy eggs? Who says the left side? Who says the right side? Everybody else is undecided. It's the left side. Amazing, isn't it? Now, there's an interesting thing about these easy eggs, and let's talk about this for a second. Over on the right, I've got a cheater set up on a double hook setup, right? I use number four hooks, little bitty hook. And I've got eggs in there in that egg loop. Now, if I put easy eggs on that same setup, what's the problem gonna be? What's that? 
No, not sent. Somebody, I th speak up. It's going to float too high. What's easy? What are easy eggs made of? Plastic rubber. Floats. You put, you put your easy eggs with a cheater and, or a winner or a corky, it's going to be floating like this, and you're really going to be mad. You're going to go, hey, that guy he doesn't know what he's talking about. If you're going to fish the easy eggs, whatever your buoyant cheater is, your, your little corky or your winner, get rid of it. And what I do on this setup on the left with easy eggs, very simple, double hook setup, nothing in between. I take off about five easy eggs. I pull them out. I do an overhand knot, I do a second overhand knot, that's it. I take two of the eggs, I slide it onto the bottom hook, right up into the middle where that cheater would be. And then I put a little tuft of yarn up in the egg loop. And what do I do with the yarn? Scent, that's right, you gotta have that scent. Add something extra on there, get a good scent trail. And it also gets wrapped up in their teeth, and I like that. Okay. Plugs. A lot of guys like to pull plugs, and you can use storm wiggle warts, you can use brad wigglers, fat fish. They all work, and they're very effective. And I pull plugs from time to time as well. I also cast and retrieve plugs. Spinners. I know guys, they love spinners. That's it. Spinners. They, their whole life revolves around spinners. Lake trout, Mackinac, whatever. I mean, you can catch it all on spinners. And you can. It, so it's very effective. You just need to cover a lot of water doing it, okay? Hey, Doug. Yes, sir. Siwash or trebles on your plug? I'm using siwash right now. I'm using siwash. Well, what happened is they were talking about changing all the rules, and I just said, you know what, I'm not going to mess with it. I've caught so many fish on plugs with a single siwash, and I'm not worried about the trebles. I just changed them all out probably two years ago, and I got to tell you, if fish comes up there and grabs it, he's got a mouthful of hook. I mean, what's, if you think about it for a second, I'm fishing number four fine wire vision hooks, right? So I throw a siwash on there, it's a lot more beefy. I'm getting hook in their mouth. So I changed them out already. So if it comes and, and you got to have it, you got to have it, I've got it. It will, it depends. Some, like some of the hot shots, I'll put one. Uh, some of the others, I put two, but I may put a, a barrel swivel on the back just so that I get a little further extension and it doesn't catch on each other, okay? And that just gets a little tricky. You gotta play with it and see what's gonna work for you, okay? Now jigs, quarter to th three eighths ounce. Jigs can be deadly, guys. We've all been on the river, big deep hole, you see them in there, they're, they're working, and you can't get them, get them to take anything. Jigs can be deadly if you're floating over or even anchoring above a hole with some, some salmon in there. They have even work for steelhead. But twitching jigs is twitching jigs. It's a movement of the wrist getting the jig to pop. It's not ripping and snagging fish, and we all know that, okay? So twitching jigs, I gotta tell you, it's an art. It's an art. And you need to take the time to practice, you need to take the time to learn how to do it because it's really easy to get frustrated and just start jerking that line, you can't do that. When this jig twitches through the water like this, when does the fish hit it? That's right, on the drop. So you really need to pay attention, you really need to main, have really good focus on what your line is doing. If you're letting a lot of slack get in there, you're going to miss that strike. Okay. All right, that's the end of part one. Go ahead and uh, watch part two now for more uh, information on fishing coho on the Snohomish River.